This is Twit. Now, we all know, we've all seen the pictures, we've all seen the videos of the disaster down in Texas. We understand that there's a lot of suffering in Houston right now. Uh, and the immediate concern are the people. And right now, they're starting to, to get back on their feet. They're starting to roll in supplies. And that's all good. However, Chebert, we've got experience with this now. In, in the lifespan of Twyatt, we had Hurricane Sandy. And Hurricane Sandy mm -hmm. had a very similar effect. Major metropolitan area, huge storm, and it destroyed IT infrastructure. And that's what we want to talk about. I don't want to minimize any of the other suffering, but this is an IT show. Let's talk a little bit about IT. Now, let's face it. The fourth biggest city in the United States, that's the greater Houston area, is going to have a lot of IT infrastructure. It's the home to a heck of a lot of co-location and computing power, data exchanges, cloud centers, you name it. That's how it works. You have a large population center. You want to get the data as close to that population center as possible so that you get faster transmit times. Now, that's all good, except for the fact that, like in Sandy, we're now having a lot of those centers being marked as destroyed. Not just damaged, but completely destroyed. Chebert, we've had experience with this. With, uh, with, uh, uh, in Sandy... It was the old copper infrastructure that was wiped out. In fact, they replaced all of it, Verizon, with, with fiber because it was just unsalvageable. You can't salvage something uh, that's built off of a, of a physical plant almost 60 years old that was underwater for a week or two. In this particular case, a lot of the infrastructure in Houston was fiber. Is that going to hold up any better, or are we looking at the same, if, if it's flooded, you got to pull it out and replace it? Well... The whole, the whole thing that a lot of people keep forgetting is fiber optics inherently, while it's wrapped in armor and wrapped in plastic and all kinds of other good things, they even go as far as putting in antifungal gels right. and right. powders into the cables. But with this amount of water leaking into the cables, a lot of this antifungal compound is going to get washed away. Now, here's the problem. <clears throat> The fungus among us grows roots. The roots, just like a tree, is strong enough. You know, you've seen trees where they split giant boulders. The roots of mold and mildew will do the same thing to fiber optics. And the problem is this is a very slow process. Right. We're going to start losing fiber optic trunks probably a month or so down the line. In addition, one of the problems we're also going to start having is where's all this gear? You know, if, if we've got some data centers underwater or we now have data centers that are that maybe the air conditioning is going down and we've got mold and mildew growing, now all of a sudden a lot of these data centers don't run so well anymore. Keep in mind, a vast majority of the APNs for cellular carriers are in that area. That's right. That's right. And, and so uh, the, the problem with this is it's going to be, this is like a time delayed bomb uh, in that if, if a provider kind of wants to chance it and say, we think the plant is okay, we don't need to go through the multi-million dollars worth of replacement costs in a month, in two months, in three months, that's when we might actually start seeing the impact. Uh, and it will be it will be sporadic and it will be random and there's really no way to tell. Now in Sandy they they had an interesting tool. They were able to take thermal cameras down into the substation vaults and actually look at banks of copper cable, uh, actually these, exactly these. And because yeah. it was copper, they could see where there were shorts because they'd see little thermal flares. We don't have that with fiber optics. With fiber optics, it's just sort of like, well, it works now. Uh, who knows if it's going to be working properly in 3 months. Uh, as you said, we might start getting those little fungal roots down into our, our fiber core. So what's the what's the prognosis here? Do, should every provider in the Houston area just rip out all the trunks and replace them? Obviously, that's not financially possible. Right. But I think they're going to have to change their maintenance schedule. I think they're going to have to retire trunks a lot faster than they had planned on. it. And, um, you know, with a lot of these streets and areas flooded, you're going to have a lot of conduits that are collapsing. You're going to have a lot of conduits that are filled with mud. Now, all of a sudden, repairing them is going to be really, really difficult. Um, th that I heard this morning a pundit, you know, saying, Harvey's going to cost us $190 billion. Wow. I think that's low. I think so, too. 
I think we're going to see my best guess is probably close to 220 250 billion dollars because I don't think the the mainstream media is realizing just how expensive it is to replace all that conduit based optics. Yeah, I, just the the traditional transit infrastructure, so roads and exchanges, that's going to run up to 15 to 20 billion dollars. If you start considering how much IT runs through Houston and trying to determine how much of that you have to replace versus how much you can salvage, that's easily 20 to 40 billion right there. Um, yeah. and and as you mentioned in IT, one of the worst things that you can do is to put in a level of uncertainty. I mean, I can yeah. deal with failure as long as I know when it's going to fail. I can't trust a link that might fail. Uh, and if, if I'm going to have that in my network, it's definitely going to have to be a backup link. It's going to have to be. Yeah. I, I, could, I could actually see a lot of IT business shifting away from Houston for a while just in case that infrastructure isn't really ready to go back online. Well, you and I both have a lot of friends in the long haul carrier world. The long haul carriers are shifting around Houston just in case. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing a lot of APNs make alternative arrangements uh, just well, in case. My APN, I, I'm just really happy. My primary APN is Walnut Creek, California. My secondary is Houston. Ooh. Okay. Well, that is going to be a developing story. We'll come back in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, because I think only then will we actually start to realize there'll be little stories popping up here and then about some links not being trustworthy. And if more of those than others say Houston, uh, then the story has legs.